Good morning and hello again. I would like you to turn to the book of Exodus in your Bibles and chapter 20 and verse 16 so that we can look together at God's ninth commandment for us. You've probably found it already, haven't you? Because by now you know that Exodus is right near the beginning of your Bible after Genesis. Let's read this verse together. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbour. Hmm, I wonder what bearing false witness means. Bearing false witness means not telling the truth about someone or something that happened. So this commandment is to do with lying. God hates lying. It's the opposite of who he is. He is truth. Titus 1 verse 2 says that God cannot lie. Truth and honesty are very important to him. He knows the trouble that lying brings. To help us avoid breaking this commandment, we are going to look at some of the ways which we can lie. But first, I want to go back in history. I want to tell you about the very first lie ever told on earth. Can you guess it? Long ago, right at the beginning of the history of the world, God spoke and made all things beautiful and wonderful. He made seas and rivers, trees and lakes, flowers, insects, animals and humans. And he saw everything was good. In fact, it was very good. Everything was perfect and Adam and Eve were happy. There, were only, there was only one thing that they couldn't do and that was not to eat from one particular tree called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Every day they walked with God in wonderful friendship. All of creation was happy and peaceful. But one day the evil one, Satan, came to Eve looking like a snake. He wanted to ruin everything and he started talking to Eve. Well, that was unusual. We don't read that the other animals talked to Adam and Eve. He asked her a question. Has God said that you can't eat of every tree in the garden? Eve said, We can eat the fruit of the trees in the garden, but not the one in the middle of the garden. Otherwise, if we eat that or touch it, we will die. The snake said, You will not surely die. That was a lie. He told her that she would be better off if she did eat it and that God knew that. That was another lie. Eve listened to the lies. She saw the fruit looked good to eat and she wanted to be wise like God. So she decided not to believe and trust her loving creator. She reached out and plucked the fruit and took a bite. By taking that bite, Eve was saying that she thought God wasn't so good, that he didn't know what was best for her, and that he was keeping good things from her. And so she ate, and she gave Adam to eat too. And in that moment, everything changed forever. Disobedience had followed the lies, and nothing would ever ever be the same again. They didn't drop down dead, but deep in their hearts they knew they'd done wrong. They hid from God because they felt guilty. They had sinned and had to leave that beautiful garden. God's perfect creation was ruined forever because Eve had listened to Satan's lies. Trouble, hard work, 
Sadness and disappointment followed. Adam and Eve did live on, but not forever like they would have. Their bodies did die, as all of ours will because of the consequences of believing this terrible lie. But their friendship with God had died. He can't be near to sin. Their perfect world had died. Everything was spoiled, and it's still spoiled now, more than ever. Sin and lies are all around us. The Lord God saw what a terrible problem they had, and even as he spoke words of judgment, he also gave us all words of hope. That a saviour would be born into this spoiled world, one who was without sin, one who was truth who would live and then die in the place of sinners. Sinners who trust in him alone to make payment for everything they've ever done wrong, so they can be forgiven and be friends with God again. These forgiven sinners will live with him in sinless, happy peace after they die and forevermore. Are you one of them? Have you come to the Saviour? and ask for his forgiveness and help with your sin. Children, what terrible damage that first lie did and is still doing. Satan sees to it that the world is filled with all sorts of lies to stop people from trying to seek the saviour. And lies still cause awful pain and damage. Even though the Lord Jesus has come to rescue sinners, until he comes back again, the effect of that first lie will still be with us. And we will be tempted to tell lies ourselves, to get us out of trouble, to make ourselves look better, and to cover up bad things that we've done. And those lies can ruin people's reputations. They hurt people's feelings and they make us untrustworthy because people will realise that we don't always speak the truth and they won't believe a word we say. Oh dear, this is not a nice subject, is it? But we need to know all about it because the Lord God wants us to avoid it. So here are some of the ways that we can break this commandment by telling lies. We can be two-faced. That means nice to someone's face, but mean about them when they aren't nearby. We can lie by deliberately breaking our promises. We can lie when we pretend to be better than we are. When we boast about what we've done and make it sound better than it really was. We lie when we say someone did something and we know they did not. This is bearing false witness. Queen Jezebel got people to do this about a man called Naboth, and it had a terrible ending. You will learn about this next time. You can tell deliberate lies like Joseph's brothers did when they told their father that wild animals must have killed him, but they knew that they had sold him and he was alive and well. We can lie by tricking people like Jacob Jacob did when he pretended to be his brother Esau and stole the blessing meant for him from their blind father. We can lie by making excuses. Adam did this when God asked if he'd eaten of the fruit. He blamed Eve. We are all guilty of lying. Lying is not okay. It hurts people and it leads us far, far away from a holy God. Imagine if we are known for being a liar And then one day we want to tell people about the Saviour. If people can't trust what we say, they might not believe us about the Saviour. How awful would that be? Boys and girls, 
Sometimes speaking the truth and being honest will mean that we have to be very brave and courageous. It takes courage to speak the truth about things sometimes. And it takes courage to admit that we're wrong and to face the consequences. But this is exactly what the Lord God wants from us. So ask yourself, have I been honest and truthful today? Can people trust what I've said? You can help yourself to speak the truth by thinking before you say anything, how would the Lord Jesus speak about this? Remember, use your words to speak true and kind things and to praise God and not to hurt others. Shall we pray? Dear Lord and loving Heavenly Father, Lord, Thou art a God who is full of truth. Thou art light. Thou hast shown us in the Bible everything that needs to be known. And so, Lord, we come before Thee, thanking Thee for the truth, thanking Thee for the light. And we ask Thee, Lord, that Thou would help us to speak the truth ourselves. Help us, Lord, to focus on what is right. And Lord, we ask that Thou would show us our other sins as well, for they are many. Help us to see that the Lord Jesus is the Saviour of them all. So help us to turn to thee now. Help us this week. We ask that thou would be with us. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.